This is Chris Overholt, and this is part of the module for fire plumes and flame heights. And here I'd like to demonstrate uh, different FDS models with various heat release rate curves. And this is part of the uh, fire dynamics lecture. This is part of the module for flame heights and fire plumes and fire dynamics. And what I've done is taken the example fire that I showed in the lecture video and I've modified it. Uh, I've changed the heat release rate for three different uh, Q, Q dots, three different heat release rates. Uh, from the left we have 300 kilowatts, in the middle is 600 kilowatts, and on the right is 1000 kilowatts or 1 megawatt. And I've left the uh, equivalent burning diameter the same at 1.2 meters. Uh, so that's fixed. So the only thing changing between these three fires is the heat release rate. And on the bottom left corner of each simulation, you can see the heat release rate. Here it's around 300, there's 600, and finally it's one uh, megawatt or a thousand kilowatts. So with that, uh, I'd like to look at each one. You can see um, the fire with the lowest heat release rate, 300 kilowatts, uh, has a, the lowest flame height. Uh, next is followed by the 600 kilowatt and then the 1000 kilowatts. And you can compare this with the empirical correlation that we saw in the previous lecture uh, where we can predict the flame height as a function of Q and D, the heat release rate and the diameter respectively. So with this, uh, I'd like you to look at the flame heights of each and first we'll look at the 300 kilowatt case and you can pause the video or uh, you can pause the video and, and measure the flame height on the left side of each fire there are tick marks showing the measurements in meters so here's point, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1 meter all the way up to 3 meters in this domain so you can measure the observed flame height for each case for the 600 kilowatt case um, you can see the flame height there and make your measurements and you'll notice that the, the tip of the flame height varies because it's in the intermittent flame region so this is where you can use the concept of a mean flame height uh, that, you can, that you can compare side by side because if you use the maximum flame height you see that fluctuates uh, within a certain zone. So you can make that measurement. And finally, for the 1,000 kilowatt case, uh, you can make the measurement for the corresponding flame height here. And one other thing I'd like to point out uh, for all of the models is the a slice file of the temperature. I'm going to load that for each of the three models. So there we go. And so if we look at the 300 kilowatt case, see the peak temperature is about 700 degrees Celsius. For this 600 kilowatt case, the peak temperature is about 960 degrees Celsius. And for the 1000 kilowatt case, the peak temperature is about 1000 degrees Celsius. And overall, the flame temperatures do not vary much. Uh, they go up a little bit with the heat release rate. Um, but overall, between 700 and 1,000 degrees Celsius for each. So um, I'll turn that back off in case you need to make measurements. But at this point, you can go ahead and make corresponding measurements for the assignment um, of the flame heights for the three cases. Again, the diameter is fixed at 1.2 meter diameter. And we have 300 600 and 1,000 kilowatt cases.